The number I got to was $15 billion over the next 18 months. But what you arrive at more fundamentally than that is that, yes, there's going to be significant demand for these ETPs. I could be off by billions of dollars here or there, but it's not going to be zero. It's not going to be a hundred billion. It's going to be really significant. I don't know what the flows will be in the second half of the year, but I expect that we'll see an acceleration as those account platforms come on and as the inevitable tailwinds behind crypto right now, which are massive, push us to new all-time high prices uh, as we move to the end of the year, which I think we will see. I will also add, I expect 2025 flows to exceed 2024 flows. I think as we get to month two, three, four, five, and six, this flood of money that's going to come into the space is going to make itself felt. You know, I think we'll, I think we could easily be at, you know, at, at five, six billion by the end of the year in net flows. And I think it could accelerate from there in 2025. And it's going to be zero. It's going to be a hundred billion dollars. <laughs> it's ridiculous. There are starting points to look at. So I really focused on two sets of starting points. One is just the relative market cap of Bitcoin and ETH. I think it's incredible that people didn't look at that. And the reason I looked at it is I was speaking with an advisory firm that has, you know, over $100 billion of assets. And the first thing they mentioned to me was that they were uncomfortable with just Bitcoin and they really wanted to diversify. They would be more comfortable with their advisors allocating if they could build a diversified basket. And it just hit me like a ton of bricks that the starting point for many investors is going to be the market cap weight, which is about a three to one ratio right now. Now, some people want Bitcoin only, some people want ETH only. they are good arguments on both sides, but the naive starting point is the market cap. So that was the first point. And then I thought to myself, well, there, there are ETH, uh, ETP markets internationally in Europe and Canada, uh, among others, and they're not identical to the US market. Those, those ETP markets operate a little bit differently, but they're not completely irrelevant. So let's look abroad. And when I looked at the AUM, it almost lined up with this market cap weight. It was a little bit lower, which makes sense to me because Bitcoin was first and some people just click the box and move on. But they were 22 or 23 percent by assets. Matt Haugen is the chief investment officer at Bitwise Asset Management, a pioneer in the realm of crypto index funds. In this video, Matt delivers a highly optimistic prediction for Bitcoin and Ethereum. With a wealth of experience in the financial sector, Matt has earned a reputation for his deep understanding of cryptocurrency and blockchain technology. In his role as CIO, he spearheads the company's investment strategies and manages its portfolios. In this interview, he breaks down his analysis into short-term and long-term perspectives to support his forecasts of Bitcoin hitting $100,000 by year-end 2024 and $15 billion inflows for Ethereum ETP in next 18 months. Don't miss out on this in-depth analysis. Like, comment, and subscribe to our channel to stay updated on market trends and more insightful content. Your engagement helps our channel grow and brings you more valuable information on the future of Bitcoin and digital assets. Thank you and enjoy the video. And from there, it's some pretty simple math. And you arrive, from my perspective, I mean, the number I got to was $15 billion over the next 18 months. But what you arrive at more fundamentally than that is that, yes, there's going to be significant demand for these ETPs. I could be off by billions of dollars here or there, but it's not going to be zero. It's not going to be 100 billion. It's going to be really significant, you know, 10, 15, 20 in those ranges. Um, and that's how I got there, David. I think it stretched our Overton window of what an ETF could do. I mean, before these ETFs, the most successful ETF of all time gathered $5 billion in its first year. And we're at, you know, 15 in six months for the Bitcoin ETFs. So I think it recalibrated how successful this could be. I think what Alex mentioned is right. There was a lot of retail demand. I think a lot of retirement account demand. And let's be honest, crypto works really well in that setting. It's a long-term investment with potentially very high gains that can be protected from a tax perspective. That's that's three big boxes to check. And I think you saw significant flows into that space. So yeah, it taught us that this is a successful space. We expanded how successful it could be. 
And now it's also created a class of traditional investors who own crypto in a brokerage setting. And I think a lot of those people are going to add ETH on top of their Bitcoin ETF exposure. I don't know what the flows will be in the second half of the year, but I expect that we'll see an acceleration as those account platforms come on and as the inevitable tailwinds behind crypto right now, which are massive, push us to new all-time high prices uh, as we move to the end of the year, which I think we will see. I will also add, I expect 2025 flows to exceed 2024 flows. And I think we're going to build cool. flows. Wow. That's yeah. Cool. yeah, year after year for a number of years. Uh, there are two reasons for that. One is these wealth platforms coming on board and the institutional capital unlocking. And the other, again, to point back to data, gold ETFs are the closest analog to this Bitcoin ETF launch. They were enormously successful out of the gate. They were the most successful ETFs ever at the time. And year two flows exceeded year one, year three exceeded year two, really? year four exceeded year three, all the way up to year seven. When you open up new asset classes, it's a multi-year phenomenon. So I do think we'll see accelerating flows in 25 and beyond. Maybe. <laughs> ETFs, are, ETFs are slow burn business. I mean, I point back to those gold ETFs. They took one year off in year eight, and then they reaccelerated again. Their highest year was 2020, 16 years after they launched. You know, institutions need to buy trillions of dollars of crypto. Right now they own zero and ETFs are going to be a primary vehicle. So I think, yeah, maybe it's the bottom of the first and the, the, the home team's coming up. So I think at launch is the thing I'm the squirreliest about because there's a big question in my mind, how fast the money comes out of ETHE and whether there is some significant net outflows that could even exceed inflows for a, a short period of time. I don't know that that will happen. That didn't happen in Bitcoin, but I do think people have sort of realized that that trade is inevitable and they're going to make that swap. And so maybe they accelerate the pace at which they make that swap. And there are two types of investors in there, right? There are investors who want to be long ETH and they will probably sell the higher cost product and rotate into products from Bitwise and Galaxy. And then there are people who are just playing the arbitrage trade who have bought ETHE because it's trading at a discount to its net asset value, hedged themselves and are just waiting for that discount to disappear if there's a conversion, and then they'll exit the ETH space. So the thing to worry about is whether those people exit and do new investors come in fast enough. So I think in the, in the few weeks around launch, I think it's possible for a variety of scenarios to happen. I actually have low confidence exactly what will happen in the few weeks around launch. I think as we get to month two, three, four, five, and six, this flood of money that's going to come into the space is going to make itself felt. You know, I think we'll, I think we could easily be at, you know, at, at five, six billion by the end of the year in net flows. And I think it could accelerate from there in 2025. According to Matt Haugen, in this analysis titled short-term pain, long-term gain, he says. The current market pullback looks like a gift for long-term investors. Key tailwinds could drive Bitcoin to $100,000 by year end. The crypto market is facing a weird dynamic right now. All the short-term news is bad and all the long-term news is good. The dichotomy is creating an incredible potential opportunity for long-term investors. Let me explain. The massive tailwinds at crypto's back. I've never seen a better long-term setup for crypto than right now. Since the ETF launch in January, spot Bitcoin ETPs have pulled in $15 billion in net new assets, becoming the most successful ETP launch of all time. But here's the thing. I believe they're just getting started. The ETPs are not even approved yet for mainstream use by the largest wealth management platforms, including Morgan Stanley and Wells Fargo. Bitcoin went through its quadrennial halving in April, reducing new supply by 50%. Historically, Bitcoin has performed exceptionally well in the year after each halving. Will this time be any different? The SEC appears ready to approve spot Ethereum ETPs in the near future, adding to the fun. We believe these ETPs could attract $15 billion in net flows in their first 18 months on the market. Crypto has faced outright hostility from Washington in recent years. In May, for instance, 71 Democrats joined 208 Republicans 
in support of a promising new regulatory framework for crypto. One reason for the new bipartisan support? Crypto has built political muscle thanks to one of the strongest networks of super PACs in Washington. This is a game changer. The Fed Fund's futures markets are pricing in two rate cuts by the end of 2024 and four to five rate cuts over the next 12 months. Falling rates are generally good for crypto. This will add strong growth in stable coins, big developments in layer two, institutions like BlackRock moving deeper into the space, and more. And it's one heck of a setup. The right mix of developments in the second half of the year could easily drive Bitcoin to $100,000 and push Ethereum to new all-time highs. The short-term headwinds. MT Gox Distributions. The crypto exchange that failed in 2014, so finally began paying out its creditors in early July. This is a big deal, $8 billion in Bitcoin to creditors over the next few months. Billions could be sold immediately. The US government holds over $12 billion in Bitcoin. It seized in 2013 from Silk Road, the infamous online black market. On July 1st, the U.S. Marshals Service announced that it had selected Coinbase Prime to sell these assets, signaling they could hit the market soon. The German government, which holds roughly $2 billion in Bitcoin from various seizures in the past, sold $900 million of its position, according to reports. The remainder could hit the market soon, but remember, these are all one-off sales. They will come to an end. As investors, we're taught to look past non-recurring events when we evaluate investments. They don't speak to the investment's long-term value. In other words, this too shall pass. MT Gox will distribute its Bitcoin, and that's it. The U.S. government will sell its Silk Road assets, and then they're done. Meanwhile, the positives are ongoing. The Bitcoin ETPs aren't going anywhere. Ethereum continues to attract new interest. Washington's embrace of crypto appears to be accelerating and so on. That's why the recent pullback is a gift. This is Matt's review of the crypto space and potentially sees all these events as a gift investors can gain from in the next couple of months. Let's get back to more clips from the interview. The long-term story is $15 billion is gonna come into these ETFs and push us to new all-time highs. And I think that will happen rapidly. Do you think possibly like a five billion or so in inflows in the first, you know, five to six months? But then ultimately your analysis over 18 months is what, like 15 billion, something to that effect? 15, yep, one five billion by the end of 2025. You know, th my prediction is based on a generally positive market. It's okay. not an extreme runaway bull market, which I, again, I do think is possible given the tailwinds. And it's not a uh, earlier than expected crypto winter. If it's another crypto winter in 2025, then my estimate will will end up will go way down. Okay. Right. People are people. So this assumes what I predict, which is a good market uh, for the next 18 months, which is my base case for what we'll see. Let's say we get 15 billion in inflows over the next uh, 18 months. What does that do for the price of Ether, the asset? Um, can we? Take some lessons from Bitcoin, and how would you adjust that for this lower market cap asset? I'll, I'll throw that to Matt first. Yeah, I think there are lessons you could take from Bitcoin. Uh, GSR put out a report on this recently. They talked about how the Bitcoin ETF effectively two and a half x Bitcoin's price on its first 15-ish billion of inflows. They considered it from when it was clear to the Bloomberg team that we were going to get a Bitcoin ETF, which was October until today, right? And Bitcoin was around $27,000 when that happened. So they're counting all of that price appreciation, which I think is a reasonable estimate. Here we have a much shorter window because everyone was bearish on these ETFs until a few weeks ago. And so we're just sort of building that estimate in. You, will we see the same impact? We're doing an analysis right now. So you're counting, you're, you're capturing us mid analysis on the price sensitivity of ETH to these inflows. I think there's an argument to be made that it could be stronger. Uh, that argument is based on the fact that there is effectively no net new supply in ETH and there is net new supply in Bitcoin right now. I always like to think of the market as two types of people, people who have to sell and people who can sell. In Bitcoin, the people who have to sell are the Bitcoin miners and they've swallowed some of the demand that the Bitcoin ETFs have had. In this video, we feature Matt Haugen, CIO of Bitwise, 
delivering a stellar presentation on Bitcoin and Ethereum ETP. Despite recent challenges in the crypto market, Matt supports his analysis with a bold prediction, forecasting a super bullish trend for both Bitcoin and Ethereum. What are your thoughts on Matt's optimistic prediction for 2024 through 2025? We hope you found value in this insightful presentation. Please share your comments and observations in the section below, subscribe to our channel, and give this video a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.